I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I've got a new charger to show you today. It's the Charsoon Magic Charger. It's a really clever charger, but I'm not actually sure that the ways in which it's clever make it the best charger for you to get. But somebody out there is the perfect fit for the ways in which this charger is clever. And if you watch this video, you'll find out if that's you or not. Stay tuned. This is the Charsoon Magic Charger. And actually, this is not the whole charger. If you, if you look at it, you'll see that there's nowhere here to actually plug a battery in. And that's one of the clever things about this charger. It's modular. So this is the base unit for the charger, and it's where you do all the controls and commands. And then you can get multiple little, well, they call them cubes, little modular units that attach to it. So this is a unit. You can see it's got a balance connector here. It charges two to six S batteries, LiPos. And I'm going to just plug it in here, and it will turn, the LED will turn green. It's a little hard for you to tell, I think, on my screen whether it's the color, but try to take my word for it, it's green and then you're good to go. Well, I've actually prepped this a little bit. Let me show you what happens. This is a module for charging. I think it's a DJI battery. I don't actually recognize this connector. This one has never been paired to this base station, so let me show you how that works. You can you can plug them in on either side, left or right. It's they, they, they stack. Let me just plug this in. And now when I attach it, the LED is white, indicating that it's connected but not paired. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the pairing mode and I'm going to pick a number and hit OK. No, that's not doing it. And I think it's not doing it because I think you have to pair with only one of them connected. So I'm still <laughs> figuring this out a little bit. There we go. So since this one was connected, it got a little confused. It didn't know which one I wanted to pair, etc. Now that this one is the only one that's connected, this one has been assigned the number three, and it comes with a set of stickers that you can put on them to, you can make them whatever number you want. So we would put the number three on here, and then that would be unit number three for charging our DJI batteries. Now, like I said, you can stack these up. I've got some that I've already paired. Here's some 2 to 6S LiPos. This one here is a... No, not that one. This one here is a USB charging one. This one doesn't actually need to be paired. It just... Uh, it's just... It's kind of... It's just dumb. It doesn't have any smart logic. It just outputs 5 volt USB and then you're good to go. And they've got one that's actually for charging your TinyWhip batteries as well. Now, at first glance, this seems pretty freaking cool. You have this picture in your head of stacking all these things together, one, two, three, five, six, charging all your batteries one by one. Uh, it's pretty slick. But there's a couple gotchas here that I think really need to be called out. And one of the gotchas is that, if I touch screen is a little finicky towards the edges, there we go. One of the gotchas is that the charge rate it has a fixed charge rate, and that's the charge rate it's going to use for all of the batteries that are connected to it. So if I set my charge rate, let's say I want my charge rate to be uh, 1.5 amps because I have a 1500 milliamp hour battery. Well then when I plug in a battery to one of these chargers here, let's just go ahead and do it. You'll see that LED goes red and that means it has begun charging and it's charging at a rate of 1.5 amps, or it will get there. And that's all well and good. But what if I have some 1,000 milliamp hour battery, some 1,300, some 1,500, some 2,200, etc.? Well, you can't assign a, a unique charge rate to each of the units. And that's actually how I thought this might work in, in the beginning. Let me just unplug this. When I first saw this charger, what I imagined was that you could swipe through the screens, right, or something, and look at number one, number two, etc., and assign different uh, charging profiles for each one. A thousand milliamp hours here, thirteen hundred here, etc. Well, you can't do that. All of them are going to charge at the exact same rate, which means that if you're going to charge up a bunch of batteries, you kind of got to charge at the lowest common denominator, you can, and that's going to slow your charging down. The other gotcha about this charger is that it only charges two of these at the same time. So if you were to go and buy a bunch of these cubes, five, six, seven of them, plug all your batteries in, it would charge all of them. It'll charge the first two of them, and then when it gets done, it'll charge the next two, and it'll go through all of them. 
but it's not exactly the same as you might imagine where it's charging all of them at once. And that's true regardless of it's a 10 amp, 10 amp output uh, maximum. And so you might think, well, okay, I can charge 10 batteries at one amp each. No, my understanding is that is not how it works. Uh, it's going to charge two of them at a time and that's it. The final gotcha for this charger is that because it's charging over the balance port, the charge rate is limited. These small wires f uh, on the balance lead, they'll do two amps, no problem. Somewhere between two amps and four amps, they'll start to get warm or even hot. And somewhere over four amps, they'll be, they'll, they'll, it's not good. I wouldn't go over four amps for sure. And for maximum safety, I wouldn't go over two amps, maybe three amps on these wires. And, and that means that if you've got, well, if you've got a small battery, if you've got a battery in the range of say 1500 or 2000 milliamp hours, you're fine because you probably aren't going to charge those batteries much faster than that anyway. But if you want to charge at 2C, 2C is a perfectly safe charge rate. Well, for a 1500 milliamp hour battery, that's going to be three amps. And as you get larger, that you're going to see that that becomes a, a limitation or a restriction. Also, if you've got large batteries, like if you've got 5,000 milliamp hour or 10,000 milliamp hour batteries that you use for charging in the field or something like that, they're going to take for freaking ever because you, you can't charge it more than, you know, two amps, three amps, maybe. They're going to take just hours to finish charging up. And that same limitation applies if you might want a parallel charge. You just, you can't use this for parallel charging. Even if you were to plug in a parallel charge board uh, on the balance connector, the overall charge rate is going to be so low that you may as well just do the batteries one at a time. Can you imagine how long it would take to charge five or six 1300 milliamp hour batteries at two amps or three amps? A final consideration about this charger is price. Now, the base unit here costs 30 bucks and each of the little cubes is about 10 to 13 bucks, depending on which one you're getting. And what that means is that if you want to get the base unit and two LiPo charging units, you're looking at $54, more or less. And that's going to get you 100 watts of charging at 10 amps. Uh, we, if we compare that to a 150 watt ISDT charger, that costs 50 bucks, and I can get a balance, a parallel board. Uh, for about 15 bucks. So about 65 bucks, I've got 150 watts of charging, and it's much more flexible in terms of the charge rate, the things I can do with it, and so forth. But many people don't like parallel charging. They don't feel it's safe. They just don't want to risk it. And for those people, that might start to look actually pretty attractive. Uh, you get you get the core unit, you get two of these guys, and maybe you spend an extra 10 bucks on the USB unit, and now you have a nice little charging system. It'll do two batteries at a time, but hey, at least you're not parallel charging, and it's price competitive roughly with the 150 watt ISDT. So uh, that's the kind of person who maybe this charger starts to kind of look like it makes sense. Uh, the other person who I think this charger starts to kind of look like it makes sense for is somebody who has, uh, they have lipos, they have tiny whoops, and they maybe have phantom batteries as well. Well, this charger can do all of those. And as you start to add up the price, the convenience of having one charger that you stick all your batteries on, not too many batteries, because again, if you, <laughs> you want to do four, five, six lipos, uh, yeah. So maybe not a mini quad pilot, because see, mini quad pilots tend to have a lot of really small lipos, and we need to be able to, you would have to get a lot of these individual pods to charge that many batteries all at once, or you'd be swapping batteries like crazy. But if you had a few large batteries and mixed types of batteries, like uh, a couple big lipos for a couple big 6S lipos and uh, maybe a, a phantom battery, and if you didn't mind that you were gonna be sitting there all night waiting for them to charge up, maybe this is the one for you. But I have a feeling that for many people, if you've got a great big honkin' 5S, 6S battery, you probably have a big honkin' charger to go with it. And that's the fundamental conundrum of this charger. Uh, it gets super expensive to charge a lot of batteries because every battery you add to it requires another 10 or 12 bucks for a new one of these pods. And it's not real fast at charging a few big batteries. So I, you kind of just got to really love the form factor and the modular nature of it. And I guess that person is out there, uh, but you're not going to see me replacing my ISDT charger uh, or my reactor with, with this anytime soon. I, I love parallel charging. I like to live dangerously. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, review of the Charsoon Magic Charger. 
Uh, links to all the products I mentioned, the Charsoon and, heck, the ISDT, <laughs> they're all down in the video description if you're interested. I've also got a whole video series about evaluating battery charger specs. What does it mean when I say that it's 100 watt and 10 amps? Well, how do those two things interrelate? And what about the power supply for this? Oh, yeah, you've got to pay a power supply for it. How do you uh, pick the right size power supply for your charger? Well, I've got a playlist that goes into all of that and evaluates some chargers on the market. And I'll put it down in the video description. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.